Hi, it's Moran Gamble from Our Permaculture Life and the Permaculture Education Institute and um, welcome into my garden. I found myself a nice little spot here, not far from the house, where I'm surrounded by some of the herbs and vegetables and fruit trees and spices, um, bush tucker, and I love having all these different layers of of plants going on and the plant that I wanted to talk about today is one of the ones that's down here as kind of a, a ground cover and it's it's lemon balm. Now lemon balm is a plant that's been grown for maybe 2,000 years uh, from from southern Europe the Mediterranean area. Um, Greece was one of the areas where it was um, grown originally and then spread around the world with the Romans. Now um, Melissa actually, the, the word actually means um, something to do with bees and when, when this plant flowers it attracts bees like nothing else. It's absolutely amazing. So it's a really good plant to have growing in and around underneath fruit trees and in and around your garden to help attract the bees into your garden. But thinking from an insect perspective too, it actually has the kind of the, the really strong citronella smell which helps to repel other insects and, and I really like it if, you, if you've if got a few mozzies around if you're gardening in the afternoon, you can just grab a couple of leaves while you're walking past and rub them into sort of the exposed skin and then it, and it helps to be like an insect repellent which is fantastic. So, but what do you do with it? Well, one of the most common things that um, Melissa or lemon balm gets used for is as a tea. And you may well have heard of it um, being used as a tea that helps to like um, a sort of de-stressing tea or calming tea. And because of that too, it's also, if you've got kind of a bit of a stress headache going on, it's a really lovely tea to have just to, to, um, to ease those headaches. And, and it's also used as a tea that um, they kind of call it the scholar's herb as well, because not that it makes you smart. But what it does is it helps to calm your nerves. So if you have a big project you're working on or you've got to go and do an assignment or an essay or something like that, it just helps you to calm your nerves and so you can actually think more clearly in that way. So it's a lovely tea to have um, in and around the garden. It's nice just to come out and pluck the fresh, the fresh herbs and just take the tips off them and you just have a couple of sprigs like that and pop that into a pot. Now if you have mint as well it's a really nice combination with that. So it is actually of the mint family but unlike mint it doesn't spread out and take over through the garden. So I have a little my little plot of, of um, lemon balm here and then I've got yarrow and then there's comfrey and there's all different things gathered in and around here. Um, beside me I've got yacon and and um, a few little like this um, pomegranates and lemon myrtles and so they just find their own little niches but they don't completely take over. I do have some mints in other parts of the garden that I allow to spread out underneath fruit trees and that's fine there. Um, they can be there as sort of um, kind of a living a living mulch and this acts like a living mulch too. It helps to protect the soil and it provides habitat for all different sorts of things in there as well as providing um, services for us um, that in, in our garden. So lemon balm as well as being a tea you can also use it in cooking so you can use it raw or cooked so raw I would be adding it to things like um, salads um, you can make uh, oils from it like flavored oils as a salad dressing um, you can also make pesto out of it so it makes a really lovely pesto blended with other things so pesto doesn't have to be basil and pine nuts and, and garlic and parmesan you can and, and olive oil you can experiment with all different sorts of greens so I, I often look around and see what sort of plants um, are looking really fresh and great at the time and then they get tossed into into the pesto. So this adds a nice little lemon flavour. Beside me over here I've got um, society garlic. I don't know if you can see that over here. This one here. So um, these sort of straps of green, they, they're fantastic um, garlic flavour. So I'd grab, grab a handful of that, grab a handful of um, lemon balm, um, get a couple of nuts, doesn't really matter, it could be almonds or, or seeds like sunflowers and, and then Buzz it all up together with some oil and you can make your own um, garden pesto which is really really delicious. Um, you can also add the, the lemon balm into cooking. So um, as a lemon zesty flavour whether it be in soups or curries or stews or anything like that. But the thing is though if you want the most powerful flavour um, it's best to have it raw or not or just like in a tea not necessarily boiling it and cooking it for a whole lot of time and if you want even a better flavor um, actually having it in in more um, drier harsher conditions makes the oils more potent uh, when it's in a garden that's kind of really lush and um, you know the flavor is not so intense 
Uh, so, so that's something to keep in mind. It grows in all different kind of environments. Um, you can grow it part shade or, or full sun. Um, and it, yeah, it's really very versatile and very easy to grow. So I just wanted to show you actually how you take a cutting from it. So um, you can actually take a tip cutting like what I had before of this. And you can either just stick that into a jar of water and let it wait until it gets roots. Or if you've got a nice prepared piece of garden, you, you can actually see if you can try just taking off most of the leaves and just pop that already into the soil. And then where there were the node where there was where there were leaves before is where you'll find new roots coming from. So we always find a node and just snip just below the node to make sure that there's no excess bit which will die off and maybe cause rot. But um, they seem to sprout so quickly that it's really not too much of an issue. So as many leaves as you can kind of take off and still leave it some, then it won't get stressed out so much and typically half in, half out. And that's that's kind of a tip cutting. But what I find is really successful with this is when you take a cutting from um, down at the root zone. So you can see here, I've just, I've gone out to the edge of the plant here and I found where the roots were and where it's starting to throw up shoots. So from this, you can kind of see, I could actually get a number of plants. So if I took that, see some roots on it already. And if I planted that into the ground, up to here then that would be a new plant. Similarly I could keep snipping this and um, get another plant and another and so on and so forth. If I wanted to get a bigger plant just to start with I could actually take just the whole lot and plant that in the ground too with the horizontal, um, the, the harder root here going um, underneath the ground. Now if you're in a cooler climate uh, this plant will most likely um, uh, seed or and it could possibly self seed for you as well. Here in the subtropics it doesn't get cold enough for it to self seed so I'm always just taking propagation, I'm, I'm, take, I'm propagating this by cuttings and um, like I said uh, I think this root cutting here seems to be the most successful way that I've been able to take the cuttings and uh, it doesn't it doesn't disturb the plant too much you just gently take some off the side and then you can um, leave most of the plant in the ground. So if you have some, why not pass it around and share it with other people and, and uh, maybe share this video and share some, some ideas about how they can use it too. And if you're looking for one and you know that your friend's got one, now you know how to go and get a cutting from it too. So you can do a similar kind of thing with mint. Anything that has this sort of um, runner down the bottom, it's not so much a runner, like I said, this one's more clumping, but it still has this horizontal root that you can take a snip off, so a root cutting. Um, I've also got a few other films in and amongst um, my YouTube channel which talks about how you can do propagation of all sorts so you might like to check that out and I have included a number of those sorts of very practical films in something that I call the COVID-19 um, gardening toolkit so it's really looking at how how you can get a whole lot of gardens happening really abundantly and, and thriving gardens happening now while so many people are looking for tips on, on how to get their garden um, just full and lush. So I'll put the links to that below. Um, I've also just released a four part series on permaculture. So what is permaculture um, and how you can integrate it into your life and livelihood. So I hope that's been useful and um, I'll catch you next time. See you later.